Hi guys, it's Dr. Sandra Lee. You guys also know me as Dr. Pimple Popper. Let's talk about acne today. And this is a subject that I get a lot of questions about. All of us at some point in our life has probably had a pimple. So we all kind of know what it's like. You know, even though it's not life-threatening, and this is something I try to remind my patients all the time, acne or bad acne can really hold you back and can really uh, affect how your personality develops. That's our role as a dermatologist, to really help to manage your acne during this time and to make you feel a little more confident about yourself and also to make sure we try to minimize acne scarring as much as we can. I'm gonna try to answer some of the questions that you have asked me on YouTube and on my Instagram. Hopefully I can answer all your questions and I can make you feel better about those bumps that you have on your skin. So what is acne? Essentially, it's just a chronic inflammation of our hair follicles, essentially, or our follicles in our skin. Acne vulgaris is the medical term for acne that we all know, okay? There's all other kinds of acne too, which are much rarer, like gram-negative folliculitis, acne fulminans, acne rosacea, other different specific types of acne, which we really won't go over because they're not really common. I think in general, most of us who are talking about acne are talking about acne vulgaris. And it happens primarily on the face, but it can also happen on other oily areas of your body like your chest and your back and even your scalp. So those are probably the most common areas, but you can get it anywhere on your, on your body. Acne starts in the pores of our skin and pores are really composed of a follicle, a hair follicle, a hair grows out of there. And then we also have a sebaceous gland, which is actually an oil gland and it produces oil that essentially lubricates our skin. So people with oily skin have just a lot more natural lubrication. The issue is, is that this oil can trap skin in these pores and if there's bacteria present, these microorganisms can kind of create a local infection there and that's when you get these papules and these pustules, these red bumps that come up. The primary lesion in acne is called the comodo. We also call it the comodone. A comodone are blackheads or whiteheads. The difference between them is a blackhead is an open comodone, meaning that this pore that is packed with keratin, which is skin cells, is open to the surface of the skin. These skin cells are exposed to oxygen and they darken. The difference between that and a whitehead is a whitehead is a closed comodone, meaning that there's a cover over it, it's white colored, and you usually can't see it very well unless you really stretch the skin, but this is white colored because it's not exposed to air, so it's called a closed comodone. Then the next level of severity is to have a papule or a pustule. There's a bacteria on our skin called Propionobacterium acnes. I know that sounds fancy. We call it P. acnes for short. This actually is a bacteria that when it gets trapped into the skin with a blackhead or whitehead, it produces a papule or a pustule and that's where we get our pimple. So if you have blackheads or whiteheads or even a papule or a pustule every now and then, it's not the end of the world. If you don't pick at it, make sure you don't pick at them. That's hard to do, but it's important not to do that because that can lead to permanent scarring. Then we get to the severe case of acne or the severe types of acne and that would be when you get more nodules or cysts. That's when we, what we call cystic acne. Those are those deep, painful ones under the surface of the skin and sometimes they come to a head and sometimes they don't but they really hurt when you press them and they make your skin swollen in an area. These are the ones we're most concerned with because these are the ones that have the highest chance of producing scarring which can be permanent. Acne is really driven by hormones, uh, certainly the skin type we have, which means that genetics plays a role. If you have one, one or both parents that had bad acne, oily skin, um, maybe even cystic acne when they were kids, there's a higher chance that you may develop something like that because you probably have a similar skin type than they do. There are other factors that cause uh, acne, other smaller factors. I mean, there's something called pomade acne, which is when you actually get acne. I'll see like a teenager that comes in to see me and they get all these blackheads and whiteheads like right along the side of their face and their, on their forehead. And I'll notice that they wear their hair like that, like, like right over it. It actually is, can be caused by the product that you put in your in your hair. That's why it's called pomade acne because you might put some product like that's a little greasy in your hair and because it's touching your face, it kind of occludes your skin and traps some of the skin cells and oil underneath there and creates acne. There's other things too like friction or mechanical forces that can create acne like um, 
people who are athletes, they might get uh, acne on their chin because they wear a chin strap, like football players and uh, wrestlers, water polo players, that sort of thing. I will say too that there is an issue with people washing their face a little too much. I think that sometimes we feel like our face is so oily, we really want to make sure it's nice and clean because we think the cleaner it is, the the better you're, you know, the less likely you're going to get acne. But really, those frictional forces of rubbing your skin really hard and really forcefully can cause some more skin to get trapped within our pores and can actually make acne worse. So really try to limit your washing of your face to once or twice a day. And if your skin is particularly oily, try to use some acne products instead or as an alternative. Food does not cause acne in general. And I'll say I have a lot of moms or dads who come in and, and they're with their kid and say, tell my kid not to eat so much pizza or wings because you know, they're they're breaking out all the time. So what I like to say is that pizza only causes acne if you rub it all over your face because you know you're rubbing the oil all over your face. When you have comedones, whiteheads and blackheads, that is actually very responsive to uh, Retin-A or, or Tretinoin is actually the generic term. There's all different kinds of Retin-A products and Retin-A is a prescription. It is actually a stronger form of retinol, which you can get over the counter, um, but Tretinoin is 20 times more potent than retinol. We recommend that people apply on their, on their face on a nightly basis. We say that because it's sort of deactivated by the sun. It won't work as well if you use it during the day. And a little pea size drop, a little, a little bit goes a long way because sometimes, depending on the potency of the Retin-A, it can be drying for you. So we usually use that in general when people have blackheads and whiteheads. When we talk about women, adult women, that this might be sort of hormonally uh, regulated, your acne might be, we consider treating with oral contraceptives. Uh, birth control pills can actually help acne in general because it helps to regulate your hormones. Now if you have papules or pustules or some kind of inflammatory component where it's red and painful, that's when we suspect that there's bacteria involved. So that's when we might use some topical antibiotic kind of treatments, something that's going to help to kill bacteria on the surface of our skin like benzoyl peroxide, acnemycin, clindamycin, those sorts of things. And also that's when we also decide to use an oral antibiotic. We use oral antibiotics because we know that some of them in particular can destroy the bacteria that cause acne. When people have a severe form of acne or cystic lesions, that's when we consider a treatment called Accutane. I'm gonna use Accutane for short because everybody knows that name, but technically the name is isotretinoin. There is a lot of controversy with this medication, but just know I personally would use, would use Accutane if I needed it. I would give it to my child if he or she needed it. And it's just important to know that it's a fantastic medication. It does something that no other acne medication can do for um, aggressive or bad acne, but it just has to be monitored. Let me kind of talk a little bit in general about the type of treatments we use for acne. Estheticians can give facials, uh, they can do some comedone extractions, but as dermatologists, we probably do more of the heavier or the more uh, concentrated chemical peels. Those are probably the main treatments that we have for acne. There are acne laser treatments. The main issue with acne laser treatments is they're not covered by insurance. So if you have insurance, I would consider using some treatments that are covered first because I don't think that acne laser is so much better than any other treatment option. Remember that this video is not a substitute for you to see your dermatologist. And certainly if the things that I'm recommending don't help you, and certainly if they hurt you, I really want to make sure that you know that you should see a dermatologist who can better help you and who can see you in person, certainly, and better evaluate your acne. You know, there's hundreds of different acne medications out there, and it's all kind of fine-tuned for you. I mean, not everybody has the same treatment regimen, so it all depends on the type of acne you have and the type of the skin type you have. So please see your dermatologist.